today. We got Cody, the future man, Green Hell here. And I know, I know. How do we pull such great guests all the way from Florida? So, uh, welcome back to Drawing Blood, your weekly uh, look into our top down adventure video game, Hashtag Blood, uh, where we follow a vampire hunter by the name of Becky. I'm Chris, and I'm joined with Bob, the problem solver, Fox 5, and Cody, they just walked by. You saw him. So, they'll be chatting the whole time. How are the levels? You can't hear anything? That's my computer. No, so maybe yes. Can everyone hear me? Joe Whimsy. I <laughs> know you're there. <laughs> we lost our usual. Anyway, so let me start. To recap uh, last week for anyone who's new to the show, this is a little thing we do weekly where you, you watch me animate. And uh, this is a traditionally animated video game we're working on. Oh, she can hear us. All right. Oh, and uh, Joe, we sent you um, some artwork. So it, I don't know how long it's going to take to get there to Jamaica, but I sent it Wednesday, and um, I sent it first class. So let's hope that it makes it there. So uh, we're going to recap where we left off last week, where we were showing you, the audience picked this one, uh, Snowpire, or uh, play on Vampire, where... Uh, we did a bunch of idle animation, some bouncing, some attacks, and I finished it this week to show everyone. Yeah, I don't mind the waiting though. Uh, I, I hope not, because uh, it took a while to figure out if uh, it was going to um, show up or not, and uh, we'll see what happens. Let us know when it shows up, I'm for sure. Just uh, text me or email me or do your thing. So anyway, oh, and the unofficial sponsor. I got my white claw in one hand, my sink teak pen in the other, and if I use either a lot, I'll think the drawings look good. So let's go into what we started last week. Uh, if you remember last week, uh, the the outside truck noise brought to you by Downtown River Red too. Um, I believe we left off with this guy in the bottom left here getting hit and I finished it and I'll show you what I did so whenever you walk up to a, this uh, snowman and hit him you're gonna see that uh, little gremlin kind of uh, hatchling we're calling him pops out when you hit him and that's when he's gonna be most vulnerable uh, we indicated in an earlier episode that the eyes sort of the weak point for all these um, enemies so we got this big round circle eye uh, he's ready to get hit right there and this is when Becky will be able to swing or throw a pencil to hit him now it's important with all these bright animations that we kind of want to return to uh, kind of a neutral or idle position which I did show to you last week but this is the idle so it's the typical thing that if you go back to episode one you'll see the ease in ease out with this frame one being the extreme then frame 13 and everything in between is just this giant ease in and ease out meaning we're favoring the middle so we got that so we want to kind of always go back to the idol whenever you don't cause an action like if you hit him it'll be a different thing so he pops in lands he's vulnerable for a few seconds he pops out back to idol pop in pop out now what I do for Cody here is I set this up in a symbol too so we can extend the vulnerable as long as we want because if we're feeling it's a little unfair or it's too fast we can adjust that so he'll probably break that into a different sprite altogether. Delighted to be here all right we got some uh, oh good morning oh man well it's not morning here as you can tell. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but it's just uh, it, it, <laughs> it just turned <laughs> two o'clock here. So we got um the vulnerable part. We can extend that as far as we want, and then he kind of returns back to his state where he can't get hit. We added an attack. Let me zoom out here so you can see it. 
And again, I sort of did the same thing where this is a symbol. If we want him to attack longer, we can. And then again, back to the neutral. Idle part. Now, say Becky throws a pencil at this guy. Or he hits him. Let's say we get go to just she swings uh, her fist at him. So we got an attack here. And that's just sort of the attack colors we picked to indicate. You know, with video games, you kind of want to uh, rely on the uh, the familiar stuff we've been using. So we'll always use, if anyone gets hit, we'll do the same exact color palette. So you know you're sort of causing damage. So we got this hit right here. Returns to his neutral part, then he'll be vulnerable again. Which will then link to this one right here. And eventually... Link to that. Oh, Cody's going for a white claw. I had to finish eating lunch. Oh, he's got lunch. This guy doesn't think drinking in the middle of the day is cool. So we got him hit. Hey, Bob, come here for a second. And now, um, vampire lore, we sort of do the, no, like the a play the on wood through the heart. The We're doing it through the eye this time. Both so if you throw a pencil into his eye, uh, made of wood, sent me. That's what RBI baseball he designs. Like. I mean, he, he goes off into the ether. I fixed that dog bark. Uh, and we sort of did the stagger. I went into the stagger. I'd rather not have it in um, earlier episodes, too. And I th also think it's important in video games, especially you kind of want everything to disappear because you don't want to leave any trace. It's... Uh, it, it gets super complicated if we left like a blood stain or something like that. Now these guys can pass away two ways. You can throw a pencil at them, or you can attack them a few times. And then we did a di different sequence for when he passes away if you just beat him. And there you go. So we got a blood spill, and again disappear. And uh, again we just want to kind of dissipate all the debris. So this, this front layer is the snow. It gets rid of all the snow that he's kind of cir circled himself around in. And then the blood and the skeleton all kind of disappear. I saw that magic trick in a movie one. <laughs> all right, we're finally getting to six viewers. Ooh, we're losing viewers every week. Um, so when you're walking through the woods or the forest in the snow, we sort of see the sticks sticking out we get close enough the snowman will appear and that's when you know you can attack him or he can attack you so that's sort of what we left off with last week it's all circling around these vampire hatchlings which turn eventually turn into full grown vampires and more threatening as they get um, bigger and badder and early in the game when it's winter you know you'll be taking care of these little guys first before we up the ante with the danger. Got them in. Whoops. Saw, saw the Instagram post on that one. Oh, the one where I got we let the. Um, Showed that thing. Showed the. Where yeah, with all of them. Oh yeah, no, we we wanted to give the audience a chance to be a part of uh, what we're going to animate, and since all of them had to be animated, we're we're happy to oblige. So that's where we left off last week. We can revisit that if we want. I'm going to save this. And now we're going to get to what I promised last week, which is a cutaway. And this is a whole different beast in terms of animation. We don't have to follow charts. We don't have to follow time restraints. And we can change the scale, the size, and all that good stuff. So this is sort of just pure animation. Just regular frame by frame. Take your time. I'll spend a couple weeks on animation. So... I'll show you what I got here, and I laid it out for you guys so I can show you how I did that and what I'm going to do to continue to get it fully animated. So. Thanks, Nana, Nana Beast. I think loves how they're looking. Oh, thanks, Nana Beast. Yeah, uh, we appreciate that. We're going for kind of a 90s Cartoon Network flair. So um, we all grew up on that stuff. Uh, Dexter's is one of my favorite shows, Samurai Jack. Uh, I would say we grew up on well, uh, well, growing up in, in uh, I still felt like a kid in college, I guess, in hindsight. Uh, now that I'm 38, though, I could, I could say I was a kid then. 
So what we got here is we're going to have an event that happens in the game while you're playing. We'll actually show you some of the game now that Cody's here. We can do that later. I'll put him on the spot so I can have some of these white claws. Um, so an event happens, then it comes to a cutaway. Those who played the game uh, got to see a few cutaways, so this one is going to be another one that we have in addition to. And it's sort of the first time you encounter something vampiric. here. This guy comes to your rescue. And then I got the roughs that you saw last week. We won't really get into that. I don't think we'll have the time anyway. So what I got here is this kind of what we call the shadow vampire. And that's a little too literal. We'll probably name him something cooler. So he pulls her back. Kind of gets her on the floor. Antics up screams and right. then this guy comes yeah, to the rescue. Uh, uh, but we're using Flash. MX. Oh, we're using Flash MX and um, we do use Adobe Animate. Uh, we just have a little bit of issue when it's just such a drawing heavy thing. We seem to be more comfortable with drawing in MX. It's a little more simpler to kind of manage. Um, we don't have as many problems with it to be honest too. Um, we do use Adobe Animate for when the job calls for it, and sometimes when we're working as a company and we have to coordinate, and since this MX is 15 years old, we're going to have to up, up it. And we did the same thing with CS3, CS5, the whole kind of works here. So, um, yeah, this is all MX, if it looks a little dated, but it's the same principles in terms of drawing and uh, animation and all that stuff. You got a lot done. Yeah, no, I, I spent a few days uh, kind of laying this out for you guys because I wanted to kind of get it to a point where it made sense. Because you can see how rough these boards are. I mean, I mean, you could probably tell what's happening, but I'm not exactly proud to show these. So what's going to happen is he puts her in danger. And this is all one shot. It's not cuts. So that's why I kind of in-betweened or ex did the extremes here. Of all that, this guy comes out of the ceiling, uh, stabs the vampire through the chest, kind of evaporates him. And we establish, what I wanted to do here was establish that these vampires are sort of have a virus in them. Uh, so if you remove the virus or hurt the virus, the vampire disappears or the person's healed or whatever we want to do. So it's not exactly the person that's evil, however the virus that sort of controls the body so he removes the virus by stabbing him through again an eye slash heart and then the vampire disappears now what we can do since these guys are shadow vampires is we can turn this into say another teacher or something and he'll remain unharmed so he doesn't he it's more of a healing process i think we're going to go since we kind of don't want to relay or rely on it being too violent since it's a uh, cuter style and we're dealing with kids in school and all that stuff but for this one <laughs> it's kind of ironic I guess since he's stabbing him through the heart but um that's sort of what we're doing with this and in the game you'll see when we get to it like if you have to cure a student or something that got bitten or something we'll we'll treat it a lot different but this is the way this guy saves Becky so we're gonna go into some of these symbols and start with the heart in this one. And I'll show you how I broke down these. Now all the ones leading up to this is just all, this is one drawing, one drawing, one drawing. And I did the words on a separate layer. So I'll do that last sort of thing to kind of lay it out. And I always want to fill the screen to keep it engaging. But if you see without it, it this is just the character animation, which we'll rely on now. Okay, so I do the same chart for everything. Uh, some people have different feelings about that. Uh, and I've seen stuff, especially with pans in animation, where some stuff's on threes, some's on twos, others on fours, and they kind of jumble all around. But I try to keep everything on the same chart. Uh, it just makes it feel like everything's drawn on one piece of paper. Uh, it's probably the more traditional sense in terms of timing that we're going to keep that on. So that's what we're sort of going to 
focus on is just trying to imagine this was one sheet of paper. Now, again, not to be ironic, but this is how many layers uh, this character has. And you'll see I did all this. Now, I did this because I wanted a few things to happen with him. And I roughed this all out first. But I wanted them, I wanted follow through. I wanted a stagger. And I wanted the head to be on a different, not chart, but I wanted a different action. So you'll see his head kind of turns back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth. Um, I'm going to turn off the eye for a second. You'll see up here that this will stagger. And then eventually, because he overshoots and staggers. And I find that staggering kind of makes it look a little more violent or a little more forceful. I wanted the arm to stagger. And I wanted the body. That's a hat. To kind of have follow through since he's kind of a heavy set guy. So, wop. And I wanted the hand to do a stagger too. So, if I were to clean this up all on one thing, it would have taken me ages. So, I'll divide it into layers only when it saves time, though. And I'll show you how I did the head, too. Because a lot of people like to do that kind of head shake thing, and I'll do a rough example of that later. So let's start with getting this on the same chart, the eyeball here. So what I'll do is bring, I'll just make a blank layer here, and I'll follow whatever the vampire does in terms of blank keyframes. So I'll start pretty much with the vampire and a rough of the, this character first, and then I'll dic that'll dictate what this guy's actions are. So I'll copy that. Control-Alt-C. I don't know if that's the same in the new one, I mean. <laughs> I'll paste it in there, and these are the charts. Now this is when he disappears over here, so the vampire is gone at this point. So I can change the chart after this, after these frames here. But to get the same timing, I'm gonna keep um, to the chart above. So we'll get rid of that. So again, I want a little bit of follow through. The stab happens, and then the heart appears not exactly at the same time and it just a little you know I find um, just those little secondary actions really add a lot of life to your stuff and it just feels a little more natural um, in real life you'll notice not everything falls on the same chart if a person with long hair is walking down the street they're going down while their hair is going up their sleeves are moving at a different rate and all that stuff if you really study the movement not everything is just boom 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 so, any questions here? Uh, so, so neat, everything's on a different layer. Yeah, no, I, I did that uh, for the, the reasons explained before. But, um, yeah, just to do it otherwise. And, and it's uh, also for a sanity point. Like, you know, when, you're, when I'm just doing the arm and the cane, like... I can in between this without roughing it out and that goes a lot quicker than if I'm always focusing on like where did the cane go before that and all that stuff so a lot of times you know layers aren't always the answer I just really try to do what's quickest to be honest because we're always on kind of a time crunch so I'm gonna blank out the keyframes where I'm gonna in between this I'm gonna onion skin all that so I can kind of see, and you'll see I kind of did a match cut to the cane itself. So the cane is staggering, but that's not really the idea of what I want to do with the, the eye. The eye is sort of the focus or a secondary focus because we have to establish a few things that the eye is part of the, the virus and that he, the, where wood is hurting this vampire. So that's why we did a line of action here and you can see everything leads up to this big sweeping motion. We're just this giant kind of arc and you know arcs are always important so he's arcing up so this is the like one action and then its counterpart sweeps back down. 
So it's just a natural way to follow your eye. So you're kind of following up, oh, you're looking at them, then boom, comes down and gets them good. So some, some people just start with as simple as that, just doing a line arc, which is always kind of cool. So this eye slides out, let's start roughing this one out. Uh, do you prefer working with something in the background, like music, or a friend, or just having a quiet workspace? I like music on it, but uh, Bob and I work together in the studio, so we always have banter going on, and it's either us talking about the project, or you know how our kids are doing and stuff, it's just... <laughs> or, or just mostly screaming about... We're we're talking or screaming about the industry is always popular and this <laughs> that echoes the halls of the studio. Yelling at me. I yell at Cody a lot online. We have uh, or yelling that uh, G Chat doesn't work. And then finding out it's not that bad compared to <laughs> But uh, no, it's it's a lot of yelling. You get when you're a certain age you get a little grumpy, I guess. So we're gonna follow the volume of these circles here. These are the two volumes. So that's sort of the base of it. Now I'm going to change the color to show. This. So these are kind of the two things I want to follow. So we got that. The pupil of the eye starts down here and right there. So we're going to follow those arcs. Everything in animation sort of arcs when you really break it down. That's why tweening kind of looks so mechanical, because it doesn't follow a certain arc unless you go crazy with action lines and all our um, god layers and all that stuff. But who has the time for that? Especially, I find sometimes I find traditional the quickest route. To be honest, that's why I'm always endlessly fascinated that they're adding all these. Um, new things to Adobe Anime, but it just seems to be taking longer, so I'm just, if this is an efficiency thing, let's just stick to what's efficient. Okay, so I'm going to just grab the red part here. Get rid of those lines. Then it's just clean up, and since it's a match cut line, I'm going to want to really focus on... The, was it, I guess, before, um, uh, the idle stances of the characters, one second? Yes, we, uh, Joe Whimsy, we um, do everything in one second beats. So um, it'll be a beat, a half a beat down, then a half a beat up for the idols. And we kind of do the rubber hose thing where it's always kind of idling up and down, up and down. And that'll be a traditional ease in, ease out, which um, it'll go from frame 1 to 13. Uh, in this is strictly flash, 7 being the exact in between point. And then you kind of branch out from the middle. So you'll do most of your in-betweens in the middle. And then um, the closer you get to either extreme, the easier the in-betweens will be. Uh, but as we, we do do the second thing because uh, it just works in terms of music, too. Uh, most music, you can probably derive everything to a beat within a second. I have faster music probably does three beats a second, slower music can do one beat every two seconds, but it'll always kind of land on the second mark, which is important for sound um, design and all that stuff. So those who've seen sort of the idle animations or the sprite animations, you'll notice that I zoom in crazy, get a real thick brush. Uh, for these ones, we're doing a little thinner line weight since the sizes are a lot different. I'll do brush five. I'll be at 500% up here. Uh, Pressure sensitive. The looping reminds me of uh, Olga Flick Studio. I used to be a lead animator at Olga Flick <laughs> Studio, so uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, no, that, that's a good good pull. I was there from 2007 to 2015. Uh, we worked on awesome shows. I love. I, I have nothing but great things to say about Olga Flick Studios. He, uh, those who've worked with Aaron, who's the um, head of the studio. Uh, they've been, by, by the way, they've been around for 20 years now, which is mind-blowing to me. But um, those who've worked with Aaron know um, just how dedicated he is as a studio head. Uh, he, he's really focused on quality. He's always tried to keep a really tight ship in terms of employ um, who he hires and all that stuff. And he's just 
it's sort of like boot camp in a weird way that you learn a lot of principles there and you know apply them to the animation process and it's something you know that was invaluable to me it's what I've learned more there than I did at school and uh, it's it was a super cool studio I, I hope all studios sort of run that way because I've been at other studios where they're not so not so much like that no but we worked on awesome projects there um, Wonder Shows and I started on Wonder Shows in season two and uh, those of you who don't know Wonder Shows and look it up it's hilarious it's so cool and we had that different kind of style of animation we did every week because it was all short based and kind of skit based. So, no, I, I can't believe he's been around for 20 years. He started the studio when he was young, too. I think he was 22, maybe? So, that's not. That's why I thought. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely, you know, I find um, um, Corbin. Uh, Hunter Armstrong, sorry, I just grabbed a DNA. I find that, you, you know, this, whatever studio or influence you have, they just stay in your DNA. Like, you'll work with, uh, you'll sit next to someone and you'll just collectively pick up on what they're, um, they're working on and you'll just get influenced by them. And, you know, since my formidable years as an animator were spent at Augenblick, you know, there's just no way I would. It, it's now just entrenched in the way I animate and the way I think and all that stuff. And uh, we, at, when we were at Augenblix, we really studied the Fleischer Studios animation. Uh, I think, in terms of classic animation, they sort of had just their finger on the pulse of everything that was going right. Um, you know, from Popeye to Betty Boop and all those, the, all the ones that you, you're you following and looking at now, we, we always relied heavily on what they were kind of approaching and their approach to stuff. I know a lot of people were doing the Disney thing and stuff, but, you know, Fleischer, to me, was where it was at. And, it, you know, I wish they sort of kind of stuck around almost because that's when, uh, I'm from New York, um, I'm, we're still in New York, and it just, that's when New York animation was sort of where it was at. You know, everything's in California. Except here on Long Island, where Bob and I work, but this is only two of us. So, brush five, one, two, three, four, five. Remind me of the name you mentioned. Oh, Wonder Chosen. It's, uh... Hey Bob, could you get type in Wonder Chosen on the thing to I give don't him know a link? How to spell it's with a Z. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. It was an old MTV like when MTV just had two channels. It was on MTV two, and it was a skit show, and it was sort of like an adult version of Sesame Street. Is the only real way, but it it was much much more. And it was hilarious. And we just did, like, we did a He-Man parody. We did um, a G.I. Joe parody. We did a Disney parody. It was just constantly keeping us on our toes. It was really quite fascinating. Does New York have a lot of animation studios? A lot of smaller animation studios, yeah. Uh, with the exception of Titmouse, which is, you know, worldwide. You know, there's a lot of, like, all city-centric, New York city-centric. Um, there's like Buck TV, there's uh, Hornet, there's Augenblick, Titmouse, and there's a, there used to be uh, Curious Pictures and all that stuff. So New York did have a bigger one, but it's still, now it kind of filled in with a lot of like boutique studios, I think, or studios that range anywhere from Bob and I, just two of us, all the way to like 13 people. Yeah, I worked for a Titmouse in Vancouver. Yeah, no, there, I mean, I was watching a this thing with Chris Pernowski, the guy who heads up Titmouse, and he said he employed 400 or 500 people, and when Bob and I struggled to make payments, the idea that we would have to do that for 250 times the amount of people blows my mind. I don't know how people... I'm just going to, in between this one, I'm going to do it live. Um, 
I don't know how you expand, really. But I, I don't mind it because it's sort of... It's the mother of necessity is like this thing where Bob and I have just sort of been getting used to doing every little thing. Like, we have the storyboard, we have the backgrounds, we have to do the animation ourselves, we have to do the post ourselves. So it really forced us to sort of branch out and do more um, storyboarding, more effects work, more animation, kind of. We, we're learning the whole process by just doing it ourselves, which is always, um, you know, the opportunity to learn, we should never really avoid that. So we got that guy sticking out. I'm going to color him just to see him, what it looks like. Let's color him here. Then I'm going to go back outside the symbol, see if it looks right with, in accordance to... So, there we go. And that looks right. Right enough. So then he slides back down. So this is sort of an easy one too, though I'm gonna rough this out just because there's so much secondary. Well, Titmouse Vancouver started with only 50 artists. <laughs> yeah, that, that's still, I, I just, the, the salary, like just in salary alone, I don't know how, I don't know. Maybe I should take a business class because I don't know how you keep 50 people <laughs> Paid every week, uh, or maybe we're just asking for too little. Did I hear a new subscriber? Did we get a new subscriber? Cody, take a drink. <laughs> I'll take it. You hire producer who manages everything. Yeah, no. Uh, you catch me in person, and I, I could give you some thoughts on producers that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Might not be very flattering. Um, I think those thoughts are going to come out here any minute. No, I have a few more white claws, and I'll <laughs> I'll get super uh, philosophy. Yeah, I'll rely a lot more on my philosophy. No, I I don't have much against producers, but I do feel they do gum up the works um, for smaller studios as ours. But yeah, I understand why they do it because um, they're used to bigger studios. So I got the opportunity to tour. Oh yeah, how was that? I'm talking to Joe Wimsey here. How big is that? Well, that tastes like garbage. Yeah, I don't know why they're so warm. I feel like oh, it, no, it was just, colder in my. It uh, just tastes like seltzer. <laughs> that's not garbage. Seltzer no. is delightful. I love it here. They're currently renovating the main building for Ten Mountain. No, cur I mean whatever. Whatever Chris Pernowski does, I probably butchered his name there a little, but he, uh, what's ever in his DNA is just working. He just seems to be a natural born sort of animator and sort of knows the process enough. And I, I had the opportunity to meet him once and he's a super down to earth guy. And every kind of thing I see him in, in terms of interviews, he just seems like this really chill really like very animatory if that makes sense and i'm just like how is this guy making like a fortune 500 company <laughs> and he's just sitting there with his uh you know hat on and just kind of shooting the i don't know if i'm allowed to curse but he's just you know talking it up and all that stuff so uh, i don't i don't know it takes a different I, I just i don't think i could run something that big without having a panic attack every day too much money on the line. I guess at a certain point it's just all numbers. Plus I don't know if he gets the chance to animate as much as say Bob or I do. do. And uh, I don't know if I would want to give up animation in exchange for that. But if I, <laughs> maybe if I saw his paycheck I would, I would redact <laughs> that. Um, so let's see. So we got the secondary of this sort of tentacle thing. And I've mentioned secondary before, but you see, we kind of got a trail here. Then it all catches up. Then it sort of flops down. Then we gotta go like that. Who's, who's talking to me? Cartoon started off. It started out. 
as a t-shirt company. And I saw that he has this um, YouTube channel where he interviews um, kind of industry yeah. icons, I guess. What was, the, was his show before that? No, he was, uh, he started off, I don't know, if, did he work on Downtown I, first? I thought that was... Yeah, I thought he because he was from New York. He, he was in yeah, he's a, he he graduated um, in the same school that Bob and I went to, which was SVA, and he had a show on MTV called Downtown. Yeah, that and uh, that's another deep pull, but it's a really cool kind of looking show, and it was very indicative of MTV at the time, uh, which was late '90s, and it super gritty, and I remember seeing pencil tests of what he did in SVA when we I think Don Duga was yeah, uh, I do that Don Duga was an old uh, SVA teacher I don't know if he's working there anymore um, but I think he was his thesis um, advisor at the time and he took his thesis and MTV was so enamored with what it was looking like that I think they just gave him a show and downtown I mean it's I don't really remember what it was about, but I remember—I always remembered it looking cool. It reminded me of Liquid TV, which they should bring back. But that sounds like they're gonna try to do something. Like that. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I have nothing but great things to say about it. It's an incredible place to work for. So many. Oh gosh, no, they really—they—they they have all the talent. It's amazing over there. Well, they just get—they do every show. Now it's like they pretty much uh, are Adult Swim. Ooh, you see, I made a mistake here. A rare, a rare occurrence, I assure you. But you see here where uh, oh, you can't see that. But um, with the part I selected, it's going down and up. So what I do, get rid of it. We don't need, we don't need mistakes in this. And what I did here, as I see. I'm blaming that one on White Claw, everyone. Because they haven't sponsored us yet. And until they do... Alright. So what I did here is I, I favored that side because I thought that tentacle was that. So we're going to start this one over. So I'm talking about Chris Pernowski and then get all these mistakes in here. Okay. Now that feels better. Now, a lot of times when I see a mistake, sometimes some people just go in and kind of erase around. Um, I don't know. Anytime you can get more drawing in and it's not going to save a whole lot of time, I would recommend it. Also, if I didn't color that, I would have never noticed it. So let's do the pupil here. Let's do the right arc. Let's do that. And we got there. And we're good. See, and that didn't even take too much time. Instead of erasing around and trying to match cut it. Uh, and if you look at everything as a piece of paper or a cell, you kind of... I always try to treat things that way. Um, there we go. Much better. I'm kinda probably going to need to do a frame before that to shoot them up, too. Okay, so this is an ease out since you'll see... Uh, this character is kind of whipping his cane out so it when you throw a ball in the air it kind of pauses in the air for a minute or at, at least it gives the illusion of that and I'm sort of doing the same thing with here since the force so it starts up here kind of kind of hanging a while and then it's gonna start slowly drifting until it speeds off there we were very smash <laughs> that's good but well, that's uh it really helps. You guys should update your Twitch page with a little about me, so Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we're interesting enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I go into work every day, and I go to work, and then I go home and go to sleep. Uh, um, let me ask what our names are again. Uh, I'm Chris Burns. Uh, 
the co-owner of Exit 73 Studios. To my right is Bob Fox, the co-owner of Exit 73 Studios. And the guy walking around back there like he owns the place is Cody, and he's just our <laughs> friend who's helping us program this. I'm going to put him on the spot, though. Well, I'd love I would love to know what he does, too. Maybe he can show me. He's got to do more than a producer, though. He yeah. has to do more than a producer. I, the, the mere fact that he traveled here means he did more. So I'm going to favor the down uh, slope on this one. All right. We should go into our theory of producers and how the name producer yeah. became. No, I love, I I do love the name producer because it indicate you know it it's one of those things where. Uh, it's like, uh, thou protest too much almost. It's that thing where they you know they don't necessarily produce, they organize. You know, but it it, it gives the illusion that they're I feel like they're doing more than the title suggests. Where it's like, you could call me an animator and that's exactly what I'm doing. Which falls under the banner of producing too. Okay. Another mistake. Ooh, wowzer. Okay. They're budget right? Quite, that's a very good question, Mark. Yeah. Uh, no, they... Uh, they... You, when it's a giant production... They do a lot more than, say, a small scale kind of production. So, the what I have so many we theories see a about lot it. Of them go across the line of producer to pretend. Yeah, I've noticed it. It's interesting because it's it's one of these sort of professions where if you're not talking or emailing or arranging meetings it's like you you cease to exist a little bit so you, i find that they're kind of making those areas more prominent than they have to be uh the very idea of a production line is you sort of want to set it and forget it and you know if you're still doing the same thing on week 13 of a production as you're doing a week one, then there is a, a, a catastrophic kind of failure there. You want, you know, there's growing pains, obviously, and all that stuff. But you sort of want to get it to a point where the art directors are directing, the animators are animating, the writers are writing, and, the, you know, then there's this little bridge in between that you kind of have to manage. But if every week you're going in and having a meeting on Monday what's happening and all this stuff I just find it to be sort of a massive waste of time and uh, I'm not exactly sure the reasoning for it <laughs> and uh, I've, I've gotten mad at producers before on projects we've had a lot of passion for and at points I've asked them what exactly is it that that you're doing and I've never really gotten a straight answer, which, if, like, you know, like I, when I yell at my kid in the morning when he's not dressed, getting dressed, he doesn't give me an answer either. So it's sort of <laughs> this thing where it's the non-answer is the answer. But my, do my daughter said today, I didn't hear you. Well, yeah, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't hear you. Right so I, I, I didn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> which is just I'm not listening to you. Um... <laughs> That's essentially what happened. No, so it's it's interesting. I, I have a weird relationship with it, and maybe because we're such a small studio, and I again I do understand their necessity for. You no, know, like if we were a Ted Mouse, obviously, Chris Bernowski can't be overlooking every drawing and every production schedule. But when you're smaller, I don't find it necessary. All right, so we got him up. Down. So we yeah, up, pause down. See if that works. Cool. Okay, now I think something's off chart here. Yeah. You see how um, the vampires moves and then this character moves? That's what we don't want. So I have to figure out what's going on here. So I'm going to grab the vampire chart right here, and we're going to have to adjust some of the frames inside here. 
Okay, so what's something? Uh, okay, so I just have to move uh, these frames. Because that's something I was kind of new to, too. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, the pop chart thing is kind of... Uh, so when it's all playing, you probably can't notice and there's a lot of stuff, but um, when you go frame by frame, and all this is, oh boy, that's a frame I wouldn't show anyone. Um, you can see here, like I said, the uh, uh, vampire's moving, then the vampire hunter is moving. There. So it's gonna get this staggering feel, which is something I don't really like in terms of this. It doesn't feel like it's all on the same kind of layer. So, to fix that, and w I, I've, uh, there's two schools of thought on this, and this is just me, um, that I want it to all feel like it's on the same exact movement. Now, this character isn't fully animated yet, so, but I do have to follow the chart here. So what I'm going to do, since the giant is out, is just move all the frames here over to the left so it lines up with this. Now, every time we in between him, He'll get fixed on this side, and then we can see every time the vampire disappears, he'll move, and then it just feels like it's all on one layer. Now that now this isn't fully in between yet, this character, and I won't even bore you guys with that kind of stuff because you've seen me in between enough, and they're just gonna. I, I don't want to waste these precious hours showing you moving in between one line. So I'll do some of the more extreme stuff here. I love the smear. Yeah, no, the smear is fun. The Johnny Bravo kind of the, uh, smear we're doing. And we did a lot of work for OKKO, OK the video game, and then we did a lot of smears on that. And it's a great way to sort of get from point A to point B. Well, then TV was talking about... It sounds yeah, like, sound like T Ted Mouse knows what they're doing with producers. That's oh, yeah, no, I, th listen, I, I can't. Think, I think yeah, we're, we're talking about places that we work with that no longer exist anymore because there was too many yeah. people, too many cooks in the kitchen. Le the yeah, kitchen. And, and let me um, <laughs> restate everything. I, I, I really don't have a problem with producers. And it's it, like, listen, the proof's in the pudding. The Tit Mouse is way more successful than Exit 73 Studios. They've been around longer. They have way more shows under our belt. So the idea that they use producers um, is a testament to what they're doing right. Uh, we don't have the budget to necessarily produce or hire a producer. And when we get work, a producer is usually given to us. So we're strictly dealing with them. Now, if we were to get, it, say, Blood turned into a TV show and we needed to hire up, of course we're going to need someone that just does the ins and outs of all that kind of scheduling and all that stuff and all that kind of stuff. So I, I do understand their, um, their place in the industry. So I, I, I do want to make that clear. Though I, I have button, butted heads with a few of them when we were working um, on our own pilot and stuff, when we were working for another company. Um, and I think it was just sort of a miscommunication where Bob and I are just doing everything our, on our own and then we have eight people telling us what to do and half the time they're not answering us and you know we're just we're, we're working to midnight every day you know on this pilot so uh the, I, the frustration sort of comes in from that all right so let's see i'm gonna start so all this timing oh i i like all the timing now i'm pretty happy with this I love what you guys. Well, what I kind of equate um, us to, it's it's like a, we're a garage rock band. It's, I always kind of use that analogy where it's people rough around the edges where um, we're doing it in a real low maintenance kind of setting. Um, there's very few of us, so we have it's to do basement, everything. It was a basement band for effort. Yeah, we, were, we, we were actually working out of a basement for a while. <laughs> um, and when you get something, a bigger studio like a Disney or something, now that's a very polished, uh, produced, every, everything's in place kind of play, um, kind of band. So what we're doing is we kind of have this ragtag team that we all just kind of 
like hanging out with each other and we all know what we're doing in terms of stuff and that's kind of um, where I'm comfortable with too. It's sort of, um, I, I like the gritty around the edge kind of thing. I like human error in drawings. I like it in, you know, how we produce things. And I like that, you know, Bob and I were talking today, we're gonna just start doing this little kid web series again. We're gonna start that next week. Or like Joe Whimsy was asking about if we ever pitched um, kid stuff. Yeah, we do. Uh, if you go to our website or our YouTube, you can see some kid stuff there. We kind of have a really broad range of uh, things we pitch to. We pitch like preschool stuff. We've uh, had some pitches to Sesame Street. Uh, we're currently pitching to like a more adult places once we get um, our latest short Flex Calibor in order. So, and everything in between. Um, so if you go to Exit 73 Studios, you can see kind of the scope of our work. Kid stuff, though, I feel like kid stuff is tough in the way I of, think kid like stuff's harder. They, they, they do, they bring like doctors in, or mm. pretend doctors now to... Air quote doctors. Psychologists, so you have to be very careful with children's pitches. Yeah, and you also, like, pitching nowadays is so much different. You, you need a name behind it, you need someone famous attached to it. It's a whole different kind of ball game now. So what we're going to do here, he slams her to what's going to be the ground once Bob uh, starts this background. Then we're going to zoom. <laughs> uh, calling out people. Uh, then he's going to grab her and so the background's going to change. So what I had to do is establish the timing now so we can uh, line that up with the background boards. I agree. It's way harder. No, I yeah, okay. pitching like 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 preschool kid stuff. I think is actually a lot harder than people. Would it's harder than it has to be in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, well, they made it a lot harder than, than it has to be. Yeah, well, ain't that the truth? So this is the timing I'm going to use for this one. Now I separated the vampire and Becky here. Uh, for a few reasons. One, I can concentrate on one layer at a time, which is always easier. But it's also the line. He has a red line and she has a black line, so I don't want to really have to worry about going back and forth and switching the line color when I clean up. So what I'm going to do is I can rough out the whole thing on one layer and then copy the second layer and put that on Becky's layer when I clean up her. But I'll focus on the vampire now. Now what he does here, you'll see that he switches hands, or he does switch hand, he, he grabs her by the scruff of her neck kind of thing. So I have him antiquing this hand here, down. He grabs her by this frame, which is quick, and then he pulls her in for that sort of trying to be menacing. So we have to get this hand over there pretty quick too. So what I'll do is just do some loose roughs first. So this hand's gonna go down. Let's see his hand ends there. Kinda wanna always follow through. So I'll focus on getting that hand there first. I made him kind of like, when I do this guy's hands, I always, if it was closed, it would be like that, like, that's his hands. But I always try to separate one finger to give it a little more dynamic. And then I'll attach those things like that, so you give a little more dimension. But he's pretty much just a triangle, his hand. Uh, I'm going to follow the contour of his uh, cape here. His spine. The legs go down. So I'm gonna bring those that way. Bring that there. And it's also kind of a camera zoom, so it's gonna get a lot bigger. Then just a basic shape of his head. Here. Oh, he's gonna draw through. I could end the line here, but it, it ends up hurting you in the end. When you take those shortcuts, I find you spend more time. 
kind of worrying about where they were. Got the teeth there. And then let's get Becky in here. Oh, we'll not worry about her later. Let's focus on him. Okay. So then I'll watch the timing. I was working outside the, the work area. Like finishing outside the work area is helpful in compositing. Yeah, for compositing purposes too, sometimes we export a little bigger than the work area. So we can add camera shake and after effects, which is always super um it's just super useful. The camera shake yeah, fixes a lot of our mistakes. <laughs> camera shake and debris. Uh, when when in doubt, just add a bunch of that, and you'll be fine. So I'm just going to clean up this quick. Maybe in a few minutes, uh, we'll play the game for you. Oh, uh, should we, what should we, what's the thing called that we're going to tomorrow? The reason Cody's here is because we're showcasing the game in New York City tomorrow. So if any of you are New York based or willing to take a long commute, you should stop by, uh, what's it called, Bob? Can you show the address or whatever uh, that's yeah, Bob's going to copy it up and put it up on the chat for you guys. It's, I think it's called Playcrafting. We, uh, showed Blood, uh... What was it, three weeks ago, I guess? About a month ago. Yeah. About a month ago in um, this festival, a giant gaming convention kind of thing called MAGFest. And we ended up winning what is called the Shiny Award, which is... Um, best art. Best art in a game. So that was kind of flattering. There was 82 games there. so, And ours was one of the least complete because we just started this sort of process not too long ago. So it, it was it was nice. It was reinforcing that we're doing something right, I think. Got his teeth, and we got his jawline there. I find when you're cleaning up, too, the kind of the bigger, broader strokes, the quicker you do that, just the cleaner the line's going to be. And look, I lost left his arm out too. So we're going to rough out. I got the second arm because they were overlapping. Now that arm starts here. Right there. Ends up there because he's grabbing her. So we're just going to rough that part out. I like roughing out in blue. I, I, we've, you know, when we did our thesis for the paper and pencil question, we've done our thesis is on, um, paper. It just, it, there's a lot of charm that comes with paper and don't get me wrong. It probably looks better too, but, um, in terms of time management, it, we would spend a year on a project that would probably take about three months on another. So it's really a financial decision to do it, just sort of where we can composite everything. I send this file over to Bob, he throws it in After Effects, or he, you know, gets a PNG sequence done, and we're done within a day. What would take another, you know, you would you would triple the production time. So what made you guys decide to go for games rather than TV? Uh, well, we. Always had kind of this fascination with video games. We all, I could say it pretty confidently for all three of us in the room, we grew up with a lot of it. It was something I've always been fascinated with. I probably get more enjoyment nowadays out of the stories in games because you have a longer kind of platform to tell the story. Um, something like the game Last of Us for is like better than most movies I find in terms of just storytelling and emoting um, so it's an efficient way to tell a longer story uh, television isn't what it used to be there's um, 
you know, the, the, there's like Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. You have three places you can go pretty much if you want to pitch anything that's even commercially viable. Uh, now Netflix is sort of taking that off the table too. Yeah, Nickelodeon's going to Netflix now. Yeah, and Nickelodeon's working with Netflix, and I'm sure Cartoon Network and Disney. Well, Disney's starting their own thing. Um, yeah, no, The Last of Us is the best. It's sort of a simple story, but it just, I like, I haven't, you know, playing that game, I haven't felt that way about a show in a really long time, or a movie. So it's, you know, I think uh, sort of there's this renaissance or golden age of video games that's happening now, where, you know, it's taken more serious now than a lot of the shows, and... Uh, Show. The, Chris is going to get deep again. Uh, take two drinks. Chris getting <laughs> friggin' in philosophy. But, um... Let me open up another one. Um, no, I just find video games with this renaissance happening now where you can tell it is taken very serious now. Wait, wait. It's, no, they heard Netflix's animation studio now. It's funny, we just before the stream looked at... Yeah. No, I looked so for the... Job posting there's a job Netflix. posting for Netflix for the animation series. Zero, zero animator positions. Yeah. No zero animation. Zero writing open. positions. Yeah. But for uh, production. Yeah, so... Again, not to pile on producers, but they're making it too easy. Um, no, just back to the video game topic. It's just... It, it just seems like a... More natural fit for a small team trying to make their way in this industry and um, the principles are the exact same thing here I would be doing the exact same thing for a television show but now with uh, adding an interactive medium to it you get this whole new layer layer of storytelling where I think that the narrator is the player now where you know you could just watch something and I be think it. you're a little more invested in this story like if yeah. Last of Us was just a, a Netflix series. It'd be like very good, but I think as a game, mm -hmm. you're more invested in it. In it, in it no, it, it puts it it puts you in a first person world all of a sudden because you're controlling that, and you're controlling the story too. And it, it's it's sort of the ultimate form of art where you're adding interactivity to it too, and storytelling and art itself. So it's this very have interesting you, thing that's happening uh, we've now. Played the God of War we haven't we played like ten minutes. I played God of War and it uh, I wanted to like it more, honestly. And uh, well the game's gorgeous, we, let's we be honest. <laughs> and uh, man, if we could get a, one eighth of the attention of God of War for blood, I'd be a happy man. But um there was something about Last of Us and I don't. That happens to be my favorite game. That it just sort of based on more realism, I guess. Well, that or I have I mean, more for invested us too, in. For being parents, I think it's probably yeah. a little deeper too. No, as a parent, um, you know, I, I it'd be interesting if I wasn't a parent. If I would probably like God of War more. But no, you, if any of you guys are parents, you know what everyone's gonna tell you is that uh, your life changes in a way that you look at the world so much different and I think that was the kind of the seed in the last of us that everyone's teaching it just like he sort of I don't want to spoil anything but um, he sort of adopts the person he's trying to save because he he's experienced loss and it, it, it just resonates with me a little more oh, yeah. We haven't got more than No, I played one level in God of War, but I don't have a lot of time to play either, so it's... I, I'm really not giving probably God of War to do. I've been playing Spider-Man that whole time. Oh, have you? No, it's funny. I, I started um, Last of Us last time when we were done here on Friday. We started playing God of, uh, not God of War, um, Last of Us again. <laughs> So I'm doing an ease and ease out for this one, since he's grabbing and pulling quick. Naughty Dog to me is the Disney. Yeah, they probably are. I think when we first. I I, I agree with that. PlayStation, like I was kind of disappointed with Uncharted Four at first, mm -hmm. and then I started playing other games, and I was like, oh, this is 
a lot better than than you realize. It just felt a little too much of the same game, I guess, as they always make. Uh, it just any of those games to me is just um, I like third person games for sure. But uh, you know, we're trying to add another, not another level, just a different level for blood here because we're doing it from a top-down perspective so it, uh, but but I do feel the emotions in these games like I, I get the same feeling when I was playing Link to the Past years ago you know I cared about uh, Link I cared about saving Zelda I cared about all the all the stuff and it was just you know there's probably 14 lines of dialogue in the thing and all of a sudden you care about it when you play it and I don't know if it's just it, it, you know when you read a book it's the same thing you know it, you could break it down it's just these pages and words on a page but when you bring this emotional level to it it's something that I, I feel like cartoons are sort of missing now honestly so we're gonna get that same arm here I might actually, you know what, I'm going to do that, this back arm separate, because Becky's going to be behind it. And you can see here, I added this back, this layer back here. Because, again, I didn't want to uh, mess with the uh, exterior line color, so I, I separated the layer there. Another, uh, But if it was just all on one layer, I probably wouldn't have worried about it. Change that to blue. I would have loved to see Naughty Dog remake Crash Bandicoot. The I think in um, what's it called? Uh, they they you could play Crash Bandicoot in. What was the Uncharted? Like they you were playing with your wife at the time or something, and you could play with the latest one. Which I I love that stuff when they they get a little meta about it. Maybe, uh, Cody, should we play some of the game soon? I'm still working on it. Oh, Cody's still programming it. This is how you This is how you do it? I'm changing the other... What are you the, changing? The, the ending of the demo, because it doesn't oh, make any because, sense. Yeah, yeah. The end of the demo says, Welcome to Mount MAGFest. We're going it says, see tomorrow. you at MAGFest. I'll see you at MAGFest. <laughs> well, technically, they're not wrong. Um... No, we'll show you some of the, the game when we implement it and stuff. And uh, We're still adding sound, and there's a lot of polish to be done. But we, we've got about 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes of it. Can I play it on this? I can play but it on this. You don't have right? it installed on there, so oh. have to Okay. You could slowly start installing it on there while you're... I thought I had an old version of it, but I don't... It, would the Xbox controller work? <laughs> no, on this one? That. There's a bunch of stuff oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I could show a, you, a YouTube video of it. Yeah, um, we should put a YouTube video of it, though. Let's see here. So we got... Do you have any uh, plans for cheat codes or hidden secrets? We have tons of secrets. Like, there's going to be a lot of stuff. Um, and we expect Chris to tell, I know, tell I'll everybody probably, about him on Twitch. Well, that's what's nice about our Twitch audience. We don't have a large one, so I can tell you guys the secrets. Um, no. We're going to have to put a cheat in, because my daughter, we're going to have to make a game with no bad guys, because my daughter refuses to play with <laughs> I think right. guys. My daughter will be good on that one, too. <laughs> Actually, after this, we're all going back to my place, since Cody's spending the night there, because we're going to New York City tomorrow, and I'm going to make my wife, who probably hates video games more than anything. <laughs> but I want, I want her to play it because I think that's a good acid test on how playable something is. Is If someone who cares nothing about it can manage to figure out the controls, and I think we're in a good spot. <laughs> when I did that last week with my wife, she made it about 10 seconds into the game and started critiquing the dialogue for not making any sense. Oh, well, well, that's on Craig. That's on Craig. I know, that's what I said. <laughs> Poor Craig. Poor Gregory. What are the, do okay, you guys have any plans? Oh, cheat codes. Is there anything else I didn't 
answer? I'm sending you. You have your. Do I have my Gmail? Internet open still yet? Yeah, sure. I can undo this. What are you sending? You're sending the. Oh, maybe I don't. Okay. Is this on? Can everyone see it? No. My password is. <laughs> uh, you sent it to me. Ah, there we go. This is uh, this is start downloading a Downloading. Okay. We'll get the game up for you guys. I'll show you some of it. You know what? Does the PlayStation? I have no idea. It'd be pretty embarrassing if it didn't, though, in front of everyone. But well, whatever. Let's try it. I mean, it, yeah, I could use the keyboard too, just to show stuff, right, Cody? Yeah. Actually, we'll let Cody play because he's pretty. Oh, he's Cody, a, are you ready, keyboard, baby? So. I've actually been playing with the keyboard lately. Oh, have ya? you? You beat the boss without getting hit with the keyboard. Really? Mm -hmm. It's always fun. To without see getting hit? Yeah. Okay. I just did it before, and I was. I haven't. I haven't. Okay. It's fun to torture somebody. It's, that, that's our motto: is misery loves company. If you're so. here, if you're here in the <laughs> studio, I'm throwing you on camera. Well, mostly so I can get another white claw. Any of you guys work at White Claw? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have some questions to ask. Okay. So you'll notice what these animations especially will spend a lot more time kind of roughing them out because there's just broader things to happen when you know when you're doing sprite animation everything's kind of registered and it's a lot easier to kind of manage so these um you know we can spend the next uh twitch screening on just the next scene which i kind of have with this uh a different way we're going to approach that animation i'm going to use some line tool stuff and flash and show you how uh it's not all just drawing with the brush tool. There's a lot of cool tricks you can do with the line tool, with shape tweening, to get, if you're just doing kind of a basic face move, how you can get that done uh, fairly quickly. And uh, I, I, you know, I imagine even the newer Flash would probably be better at that. I, I'm hoping they're better at something. I just close this out. Uh, it's always fun to talk. <laughs> yeah, no, no it's it's yeah. easier. Misery wants Co Cody, you're you're on the spot. You better fix that programming. No, I, I would. You know, if you want to just get up even to the bus scene, we can show them all the animation. I think the bus scene is sort of the most indicative of what we want to have happened in terms of animation throughout the game, which is sort of had this lively thing you can sit back and enjoy and watch if you're a fan of animation. And uh, that was a lot of work, that bus scene. And I think I showed it in episode one of all this, but it wasn't playing back no, right. No, Picky. Oh. Is that dog going to be barking the whole time, too? Yeah, I fixed that. Oh, you did fix it. Cool. Um, I worked on the plane. You worked on the. What's nice about coding is you can do it during this commute. I can't really drag this Cintiq anywhere. So if there's a problem at playcrafting tomorrow, it's all on Andrew and Cody and me and Bob to sit back and blame them. Mostly Cody. Mostly Andrew's Cody. Andrew. Andrew's, Andrew's a busy boy. Nah, uh, we're excited. I hope. Uh, you know. That uh, playcrafting, uh, Magfest was a real thrill. Uh, I never really got to be part of that atmosphere, so it was it was a pretty big venue. It was kind of crazy. So we're gonna color this, then we're gonna work on Becky. Should I download this thing now? It's been downloaded. It's still downloading. Well, I mean, I, that's why I said. Where's Gmail again? I'll play so, Well, I'll go to it right now. Here. Here, you do it. Bingo! Ooh, left-handed. Showing full there's. Oh, on that side. 
never even thought to use that part. Yeah, no, I'll keep going. So you'll see here, we got him grabbing, and it's kind of a fast move, but he grabs her kind of quick. So then we'll do her and the arm behind it. Let's see here. Would you guys like to see the game? Let's start the game. I'll cut back to this. Hold on, right, give me a minute. Oh, Cody needs a minute. out a few more Beckys then. I talked about how good I am. Oh yeah. I love where this animation is. Thank you. Or no, what where animation. They're like going, I think you were talking about uh, into animation. Like it's still it. animation is going more into video gaming. I'm probably because of Cuphead. Cuphead opened the doors. Um, we have to give um, them pretty much all the credit. Uh, there's a long period, and like we're talking 30 animation. years where everything just looked like a video game. We, I mean, there's different 3D and all that stuff. Where, um, I always had this really giant uh, Japanese influence, I think, and you know, Nintendo and all that stuff was started over there. It makes sense. But now it, it's interesting because there's two things happening. We have people doing pixel art, which was basic pixels were made out of necessity. They were just what you had to do to make memory low on old games. So now it's back in this huge way, which is which is cool. I love pixel art, and we actually did a few series uh, with pixel art. Um, you can check that out on our stuff too. And is someone in there? Yeah. No. And now what's happening is we're getting these. Uh, a few games popping here and there that are animation animation centric because we're figuring out that it's like you're just making a sprite sheet anyway so you can do it in literally any style you want so now we're getting this sort of all across the board kind of look I, I, I said it before but there really is this renaissance happening with video games and I only hope that it kind of leads into animation where not everything's looking so similar or so generic and all that kind of stuff so let's see so what i'm trying to keep in mind that his hand the, the uh the demon's hand sort of always on her chest so we're going to keep the action line here and again it's sort of a camera move so we'll adjust we'll adjust the background accordingly guys behind me are trying to... Oh, I don't have the driver? No, I'm talking about like the point of Oh. Well, Mr. Keyboard, I I beat the boss with no... With no uh, yeah, what, are you afraid to do it live? So uh, he said he could do it. I don't believe him. With Becky's mouth. If you actually programmed the game, you would know how to play it. But yeah, if Andrew was here. I want to get Andrew, Dong, and Greg here, too. I know that's a kind of a commute. I haven't seen Dong on this in a while. I guess me making fun of him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> really got him upset. Um, what can you do? All right. That's good enough for government work. Color that red, and then we'll clean her up. And you can see how long these scenes are going to take, where the sprite sheets you can kind of cruise along <laughs> and go on autopilot. But these animations now, you really have to be in the game. Uh, that's not a play on words, but you really have to have your head in the game <laughs> to make sure everything's not the right thing. It's like Dark Souls. Or two play oh, well, that, you know, we would take any of that. Dark Souls, uh, 
That's a game everyone knows too. Who said it was dark? It's like Dark Souls, but on the 2D platform. Uh, Andrew said he'll come in the summer. We don't, oh. go to, we don't go to the beach around here, even though we are on an island. We're busy working. Andrew, yeah, no, bring <laughs> bring the kids and the... Or the kid and the wife, and, you know, we'll, we'll make a day out of it. You know, the wives can have fun and we'll get to work, since this won't even be close to done. You can stay at the aquarium. Yeah, that's right down the road. Alright, let's fill in this hair. Just let me know when you're ready, Cody, and we'll download it for you. Yeah, it's it oh, it is? <laughs> as as <laughs> everyone in the it's Twitch stream is telling it. you. Yeah, he's like, it's not. Oh, they can see it on my screen? No, they're just. Oh, they just let me know. <laughs> calling your grandpa. <laughs> is this thing downloading? What's this computer you're talking whoa, about? Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, let me call you this, and then get Cody on there. Forgot our eyebrow. Actually, erase that one too. Do do do. And I always sort of color after I clean up, just, it, it just helps me kind of um, register like, that it's finished too. Well, like, I think I, you, the, one, the line gets harder to see. It does get harder to see, that's true. Yeah. Let's see, the scope of her, we're just going to wing that one and then we should go there. Let's color that. Kind of reminding me of when I worked on Super Jail, how we had to work with uh, just a lot of kind of revisiting the cleanups <laughs> just to get get a move on here. I always feel like I'm in a rush. Okay, that works fine. So I'm just going to get rid of these keyframes now just to, so you can kind of see where he's going. Now this frame, we're going to have him start pulling yanking on her shirt to get to there. You you ready to start this, Cody? Um, yeah, once you're done with that. You, you just let me know. I'm just talking to Greg for a second. Oh, Greg. He's talking to our writer. Well, he just had to write some dialogue real fast. Did he? He's writing dialogue now for... Is he going to? No, he won't. Be there. Okay. No, he wrote some dialogue for the ending. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Clarifying a couple things. All right, let me. The, the blood is not the Dark Souls of 2D. <laughs> I don't think any, these guys want to play a Dark Souls in 2D. Is no, blood the Dark Souls? Never, never. Well, we do have beat. -em. It is a little beat 'em up, fish. Oh, no, yeah. Dark Souls. It's like oh, like how in terms of how hard it is. No. Grandpa, move over. We're gonna have to. Play. Oh, he said Cuphead <laughs> is the 2D. Yeah. Oh, you want to hop in? All right, everyone, this is Cody. That was a great introduction. Yeah, he's our programmer. Yeah. It's like, no, he's oh, I was going to pull out the scene on it. It should be. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the, um, okay, yeah. I had to use that oh, real quick. I'll, I'm going to talk to Greg for a second. Um, no, t tell him a little bit. He, Cody's from Florida. He used to live with Bob and I, actually, when we were all roommates in Jersey. I feel like Chris is much taller than me. He's a lot. He's a lot fatter than me. We did it extract too. Was a question. I don't know. Hold on. Probably. I'll fix we can probably close. Um, Just uh. Go to desktop. Wait, is this? Yeah. Yes. 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 All right. So let's go full screen. Are you seeing it over there? Yep. We're gonna see. Yep. Alright. Oh, I 
hopefully. It's all good. So this is playing with the keyboard, so. Yeah, you're gonna bear with me for a second. I don't even know how to enter her. Oh, he's gonna see it. We've made it that far. Hmm. Oh, I just realized something. I can't do it. I can't do it with the keyboard. Oh, because it's running. Do you need the. The PlayStation controller should work on his. Uh, yeah, good. It's just got that. Yeah, I forgot the key. What is there, the thing with the mic? The, the keyboard couldn't do. Uh, keyboard controls only work. We had the. Oh, this guy's got the most of those all the time. We got it. We got to fix this guy's. <laughs> what have you done to these computers? <laughs> they look like they're in the dust. I, hold on. I think Chris needs to go back to animating for a minute. Yeah, we'll go back to animating for a minute. That was the best gameplay. It was a good intro to your computer. Well, I've never seen Chris refuses to work with wired mouses and he refuses to work with wired <laughs> keyboards. So Whatever. every USB port is taken up on his keyboard. Uh, I forgot. Keyboard controls don't work unless oh, okay. unless I'm in Unity. All right, let's uh, work on something here. What's I didn't you got? Anything. You can't unplug them because you'll. That's one of the. I didn't elements. touch anything. Yeah. Just oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there's something in the back for sure. No, okay. and there's the USB. No, no, no. But you got to plug into the computer. What it just was. <laughs> you see what happens when I leave my clothes? Oh, I don't know. You I literally know. have every single. I know. I'm jam packed. USB. You I'm, a, like I'm the 21st century digital man. You must have about 18 USBs filled up. Imagine if we had a big audience. <laughs> uh -oh. All right. Andrews. Oh, is really Andrew? What does Andrew say? Get it together, Cody. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim, I would love that too. This game is too much tough that you always make it. Oh yeah. No, uh, I don't know much about programming, but Unity seems to sort of be you the. You don't know much about computers. I don't know about computers. <laughs> I do two things good. Draw. That's it. Does he have the? I could get the Xbox one working really quick, but I don't know if he ever downloaded the... I definitely didn't download it. ...the anything. driver. Had to animate on the fly, one of these suckers. All right, well, crawl under a computer and plug in... Did he plug it in? Headphones plugged in? Though? Yeah. These yeah. You know, I go to the bathroom for one second and... <laughs> oh, freaks. Should have it all stopped to my computer. And we could play it on the TV in the back, but it doesn't look like. Oh, yeah, well, what do you want to work on, Tickety Poop? Right. You have to turn it off. Oh, I mean, Unity works very well with the Unity. With the 2D engine. Well, I think everything is technically in 3D with Unity. So, you know, including the camera. So, we actually do have a Z space component. And I think that'll be nice when we add clouds or something, because um, something so it'll move at a different uh, but it's not panning rate. It's set up to use a specific microphone, so it's No, uh, well, you should see me typing. Are you ready now? Should I go to the bathroom again and break my... <laughs> do you just want to drop plug or anything? You don't want to... I don't want to break anything. But I don't care. Oh, I just broke the controller. <laughs> he broke something. You better not, you better not get hit once, Mr. Programmer. So they can see this, right? We'll see in a second. Oh, was that the delay of this thing? <laughs> this guy. Careful, man. Holy <laughs> smokes! All right. Oh, we got we got action here. All right. It's a comedy hour and. Uh, yeah. Remember when I said why Tim Nuss is more successful? <laughs> What's this exactly? This is a. Of my argument for why you do need a producer. So one of the big things we added recently in this game is a lot of dialogue. Um, <laughs> just to push the story along. Which, Chris, yeah, you animated in the first video, right? Yeah, I was showing you some of these talky animations, uh, as we are calling it. And you can see it's a different line weight. Uh, we can actually go back and do it, and I'll show you how I did some of them. I, I just try not to do the 
what I call the mundane kind of animation, where if you're just going to watch me open and close a mouth, it's, I, I don't find that very compelling, so. Since I've played this about a hundred times. I'm gonna so, yeah, he, she, he pretty much gave you a call to action, which was you had to, you had to feed the neighbor's dog. So you can see I think here. It's supposed to be your own dog, but we. It's in the oh, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> We're all getting it together. So. So now, yeah, you can throw stuff. That's the dog bone right now. So he's gonna give you kind of a run through about a. And. A lot of wh things will just you know add a lot of things you can look at. And you know, check out, search, those types yeah, of things. Yeah, we'll, we'll make our way to the treehouse right now. Right now, we just have to get pretty much the components I of a it. complete oh, level. Oh, yeah, the dog barking. This this is the old version that has the dog yeah. barking. That won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you, gave me a, you gave me a dog sound effect. It's the Dexter's lab is very... Oh, uh, oh sorry. Yeah, we can't. Uh, can't. I just can't. Just put unity. Sorry. You're just trying to read. You, Grandpa, stay away from me. I just want to read what you can. You can't do. open, no. you can't have that going on. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Look at mine. Look at my computer. Oh, I can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. It really is like a. Grandpa Bird uh, is back in. Green account. from, uh, whatchamacallit, from the office. Oh, no, I gotta go catch the bus. It's oh. a. And they can hear the music and all that. Well, yeah, they hear the dog. <laughs> Give the dog a bone. Did you guys get the dog? They heard that dog. <laughs> Goodbye, this very much dream. Yeah. I'm already sold. <laughs> we just gotta finish it. We have to. The dog from Powerpuff Girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just very close. Well, no. A few it. changes. We're, we're it it changed in the that idea was, that, that we. Bob's. That was my only animation I got to do. Yeah. The... We're hoping also that one of me and Chris's old roommates, Terrell, plays this game once and he realizes that we turned him into a character. That's Terrell, our old roommate. I, Bob, did you live with us with Terrell? No, no, I moved in because he moved out, I think. Oh, man. We really uh, we upgraded pretty we well. We upgraded. <laughs> Terrell was a. That was a fun roommate. Go, go to the, yeah. Uh, go to the snoring guy. We have kind of an inside joke going. This guy's asleep everywhere. Rob does not want to wake up. So, we'll have all these guys, event We I have to make talking animations for all of them. Not necessarily on the bus, but we do want reoccurring characters in the school. So one of the funny things, I, I let my three-year-old daughter play this for the first time last week, and you'll see in a minute where I go, I move Becky to, and she sits down, and my daughter yelled at me, and she said, she's not wearing her seatbelt. Yeah, none of these kids are. Yeah. Uh, I never had to on the bus, though. Nobody, <laughs> nobody checks it. They still don't. Like I think she wouldn't have cared, but you, you, they're all just thrown about. And we have different cliques in this game where we have these punks who are sort of the the bullies of the school. We have the nerds, we have the gossipers, we have the chatty Kathy girl. Um, so it's a, it, it would be like a typical, I guess, 90s middle school is what we're going for. Where Yeah, one of the cool things with the development is um, when we were at MAGFest, Greg was showing me on his computer is that he has um, he has like a whole list of who likes who, you know, who's oh, eating with who. Yeah, so he's cool. trying to like build these characters out as actual human beings. Greg's been hanging out a lot of at, at a lot yeah. of middle schools. I've been telling him to hang out more at uh, more middle schools to get info. And you see, now we have Corey kind of writing this note, which we're, I I hope we we reuse. <laughs> wristbands. wristbands are the. The main thing to make kids bad, I guess. <laughs> yeah. There's snap on bracelets, actually. And I got the punks on the same chart. You see, they kind of growl at the same time. So. Yeah. 
So yeah, this so is, uh, I showed you this animation on an older stream, but we, uh, periodically she'll have a dream that sort of gives a little indication of what's going to happen in the story, or you get little another clue to what's happening in the story. Um, and you'll later find out certain stuff about Becky's family history and stuff that plays into the game. And Bob did the, us the awesome service of making all this stuff interactive. You can knock down the garbage cans. Uh, you can hit the stop sign. You can... You know, well, I don't know about the rock, but... <laughs> it's a rock. It's a rock. But, uh... Yeah, sure, you want to punch a rock anyway. Her, uh, we got to do her throwing like a coin in or something. Too. Oh, the fountain. No, I want like a wish in the fountain. I'm we if we had coins in the stuff. game. I, never just, I realized I never put it in. I did that a lot. I never made a fountain So this is sort of, if we're equating this to Zelda, this would be like Dungeon, say, one right now. So now we're kind of in the nitty gritty where it gets dangerous all of a sudden. Especially with these kids. This was, I got to animate this one actually. This is something I did. So the spinning. There better be a secret rock now. <laughs> and she also looks mega angry when she's running. Well, she's an angry runner. That's a, that's also. I I'm angry noticed. when I have to move yeah. faster than than a brisk walk too though. Oh, we didn't get the map pulled down. Uh, All right, so you can see everything here sort of interactive too. You see uh, Potion X on there. That's another Powerpuff Girls callback. If you can go over to them, from there, uh, see. Yeah. yeah. But can you're can you interact, to interact with that? Oh, we animated or, that, animated but a, pro that. a certain programmer didn't want to do yeah. it. That's <laughs> what I had to deal with all the time. Yeah, but not in person. Yeah, no, no. no. All right. So we're making little obstacles and did this too. The electrocution animation, which is so great, but like at Magfest, everyone was too scared to walk in the water. So no one actually ever gonna see it. <laughs> I feel like most I think of the stuff Magfest, I anime no one sees, so it's, I'm okay. But with you it. see but you saw like at Magfest you saw actual gamers playing. Yeah. Who kinda yeah. knew how to play a game. I think my watch. favorite well I'll 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 tell that story when you got <laughs> Okay, so we you know as any game starts you gotta do the mice, the rats, the bats. You know, wolves maybe. So you know, we want to start off. We're kind of bumping the yeah, every every level or every time you get. We're we're not exactly sure what's happening in this game yet. We we we're not aware of the vampires yet and all that stuff. So we're kind of keeping it. You're gonna die on your own game. Oh my god! I thought you said you did get hit. Well, <laughs> I'm getting hit on purpose. Uh, you guys weren't kidding about the Cartoon Network vibes. That well, yeah, no, no we're, yeah. we're full blown. I'm not kidding game. at all. <laughs> we're taking that. They know, you know, they're stuck on their own style now. So I figured they they left the style behind for us to it's, take. It's a it's the '90s Cartoon Network. We're not doing the current current uh, style. The janitor is way over his head with this leaf. <laughs> <laughs> Those hearts, I don't know why they're there. Well, there used to be boxes there. Oh, you didn't hit them? Oh, I've had a few times where hearts show up where box used to be. I've, that's a long time. Yeah. So, I, Cody, go down to the... You, oh, you showed you these yeah. bats. He, you saw it, he hit them, but he couldn't destroy them yet. So, that's you'll, you'll there, see. There's, you'll there's see a something. heart bug. I, I, I forgot about that. There's, there's like, hearts show up where box used to be. And all these backgrounds were done by Bob. The music was done by Bob. See? All the interface was done by Bob. What are you worried about over here? I was worried that you were going to die fighting two rats. You're walking into this place. Rat raping. This is where we get, you know, we're, we're trying to up the difficulty here. Where you get the next item. Thank God Andrew made this playable because this was the hardest section I've ever played in my life on the video game. Yeah, we didn't have the <laughs> multiple attacks, like where you can swing and do the uppercut and the uh, like Hulk smash. Alright, so you'll see in the upper right hand corner now, 
the button interface. He's acting as if I'm he pointing to it. <laughs> good thing you guys I'm can talking see to Cody. I don't. I don't think Cody's that good. I'm just trying to show him. So now you can see where my finger is pointing. So now we've got the pencil. The pencil sticks into the hole. And this is just a demo, so we had to really get into when we get to the story what's happening. Because we probably won't get the pencil till later in the actual game. Yeah, I felt like the, the length in this we decided it was really good. People learning. Yeah. So yeah. if you if you fought them earlier, you would notice that you couldn't kill them. Charge attack like a spin move. Um, oh, I think every well, I think every level we had another combo. Yeah, we're gonna have a lot of combos, and I there's gonna to be a, 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 a very critical particular hit. weapon that we have to get at some point too. So this is sort of the love interest that you. Heart in every box, though. Well, we got rid of the coin. That's all. Okay. Hey, so if you're going to have a charger, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna add <laughs> some kicks. We're gonna add slides. We're gonna add a dash. We have a few things we want to add. How many an animations do we have? Oh, well, if we were to add them up, I, I really don't know. With her, probably, with her, you see every angle we had to animate, and it's not the typical Zelda thing where it's just up, down, and left or right. We did uh, diagonals too, so we had five animations per attack, and there's four attacks, so there's twenty just in the attacks. Uh, same with the, the run and walk, the slide and stuff. So with. Her alone, I would gauge right now where we stand around 80 animations. Um, then there's every other person. Did you notice the, the quarry call later? I did notice that. So we learned that the bats are. I think the he would have called like right here. Oh, I did. Amazing. Awesome. We also made lockers that you. that aren't in the game. Yeah, we're gonna open the locker. Because the, the, the animation was never done. The locker animation? He opens it, but then like oh, there was no exit in there. Oh. Are you kidding me? That's what you're arguing? I'm just saying, that's the reason I took him out. You just run away! This call is weird. I don't even remember. This is the classic Rick and Morty call. We got called okay, out on Rick the internet. Rick and Morty, we got called off. Our first, our, 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 first only, hashtag of our only review was that the dialogue sucked, <laughs> <laughs> which is you know so you work four months on something and you bring it to uh, yeah, then we then we travel seven hours to get somewhere. That's what you like, you know, when people just go, yeah. well, that like, that, the, the that work that goes better than rats and bats, bro. Okay, so you know, the so animation you, I'm working on now will be an indicator of what this is, but this again is just we're trying to update it a little bit. So you're used to throwing the pencils now. They attack you. They'll be moving around too. So you think you can throw it. Okay. Yeah. Do it a little slower for this pencil. So you hit this guy. A little slower. Now the eye is revealed. And we're kind of making, you see you can't punch him. And you can't throw a pencil from far away. So you kind of had to do this combo thing where you hit him, then back up, throw a pencil. And that's, you know, we'll learn that eventually with the um, animation that we're working on prior to this. Oh, you did do that. It's under it. Nice. <laughs> oh, you, we like should make it a donk. Donk it. Smart game design. Look at that. All right, now we have our second cutaway. Oh, yeah, why is that there? I know what it is. Was that a box? That's the one I was thinking of, actually. That's that's Bob. <laughs> Bob the problem solver. Box, Box five. five problem solving. Okay, so Mr. Rockwell's in trouble. We're kind of showing our cards a little bit that there's something bad behind this door. Uh, Andrew does with the. Uh, thank God it was for Andrew. I just said I knew it. I say no, and then Andrew's now trying to take Andrew, it. Andrew, this is why we need you here playing this game. <laughs> He's going to steal my thunder. <laughs> okay, so this is Mr. Rockwell. And we'll learn in this game that he's sort of their teacher and the whole thing. Oh, man, you're right on top of that, dude. 
Oh! Whoa, I never got hit before. I'm gonna try to show them all of this. Is that your team? Okay, so this is the first boss battle. Oh, you can hit that now? Hey, you always good. You always good. I'm gonna tell my wife that tonight. She's not making it this far. <laughs> I might just stay here. You guys should just can go to my place and watch my kids, please. <laughs> Pick me up tomorrow. Like in normal Nintendo fashion. Yeah, each no, round, no, each gets, round a gets a little harder. So these things are attacking in tandem now. Oh, yeah. Yo, so I'll say. I think what would be cool too is we're going to use the desks as sort of a defensive mechanism where you can hide behind them too. Oh, Cody, you're going to lose! You're not a pencil thrower. I became a pencil thrower lately on this new version. It's like it knows the one I'm going after. That one That's all I for, baby. Alright. Okay. Bam! So, that's an idea of level one. And we'll see you at MAGFest. And that, I think, is next next December. <laughs> no, 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 we're changing that now for tomorrow. So that's our demo, and as it stands, that's as far as we got. But we do have a winter section that you guys saw that we're working on. Bob, do you want to show these backgrounds? I think they're amazing. The ones you're working on now? We got 14 more minutes. How do I escape this? Apparently, I just pressed that button. Oh, GB crew! Your Florida buddy. Just uh, tally, how many of you guys are from the States, United States here? And how many international? I'm going to unplug the... I'm going to unplug Well, I got three drawings done. That's that's not doing too God. well. <laughs> so well, Bob, I want to... Bob's working on this graveyard All scene right. now that I just so think it's breathtaking. Open up some BGR. We'll show you... Actually, I finished... Doing a lot of the house stuff, so mm -hmm. show that. Mm -hmm. and that file is. Once you start masking big. and stuff, and it's not even that big. It's but once you start doing masking and all that kind of stuff in Flash, it starts to get pretty heavy. So I think we grazed over this last week, but if you want to explain a little bit of. So I was trying to show Cody hasn't even seen this yet. I was trying to plan out the the whole house for him. I think we'll probably start in the house. And yeah, we'll start when they're waking up for school. Yeah, so we I was trying to show him where I'm going to have each room set up. Upstairs, we have a downstairs, you go to the dad's study, the living room. I think this will probably be a garage if I haven't done. Oh, that's a cool idea. I didn't think of that yet. And then, so this will be the oh, dad's room at first. Big. No, it's, it's so much masking mask going on in here to try to make it look like it's painted. Gorgeous. And then we have just the detail on the board and all that. Becky's and this room. is all vector, by the way, which is just it, 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 everyone's always like pushing new flashes and new programs. We're doing this in a program that's 16 years old. Probably. I mean, if you get a <laughs> driver's permit, um, and we're just doing it with masking and just simple vectors and what's. The beautiful part about that is you can zoom in and there's no degradation. I think we're going to have, I made this music box, is going to be a, a thing I think we want to use at some point. I, I want the music to have a lot of, uh, it was a, I think it was a, for a few dollars more, the old uh, Western used this locket. And I want to bring in this kind of theme song throughout the entire thing and have this same song kind of play a very... Uh, you know, big moments, and use that song in throughout the whole thing. We Did have, to make, we have to make new posters. No, I haven't done any, okay. any animation yet in the backgrounds here. But we'll probably go into the computer a little bit. Yeah, like there might even be. I think we're gonna have a little bit of social media. 
This is the bathroom that we saw. And then now I started working on a kitchen. That was beautiful. So we have this all set up. Nothing's animated yet. I was just kind of setting it up. But I figured we'll be able to open the... Oh. oh yeah, that was yeah exactly. That's a movie. Was it for? Bob, will you be able to give a demo on how? Oh yeah. yeah maybe next week we'll do. I'll do maybe some Bob, background yeah. stuff. You want to do the background stuff? Yeah. That'd be awesome. That'll give me time to finish the yeah. cutaway. <laughs> <laughs> this is the dad study when you walk off to the side there, and then I made the living room for her to walk in, and then Ooh, you would go into the great. kitchen. You see, we're new. We're we're, I think we're timeless. We're, we're timeless. Night. We're trying to say it's. Our theory is it's set in the '80s mentality, but it's in present day. So like That's kids right. can do things that they could do in the '80s. Yeah, I guess the hashtag blood. You're gonna have to. Yeah, we yeah. they have smartphones. So let's oh, open it. up. It's just the pound side. Right. And then I was just finishing trying to get. Coloring for a graveyard. Oh, it's the, uh, it, yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, There's we're doing a yeah. vampire thing. We need a graveyard. We don't need to know how it just, I was taking all of our old trees. I think we're gonna try to. We're trying to figure out how we're gonna do the shadows exactly, but we also have to apparently she can walk too. in front of it. But kind of doing a very samurai Jack uh, graveyard. And did you make those like uh, rectangles? Just a but just like, one rectangle. Yeah, just too. one rectangle. Yeah. And okay, got it. And so what we did is in here, I actually have we have a base color, and then I have my paint strokes that I was kind of replacing all over to give it that texture, and then we have a layer of the cracks. Just paper. Nice. And so far, it's just actually one tile that I repeated a lot. And I if didn't you flip notice it, it. Yeah, no, if you flip it a lot, you really, it kind of actually lined up pretty well a lot. No, I like that crack. Like yeah. That. That's cool. So, <laughs> making some debris to throw around. Yeah, just lose and we the used the same trees that we had, so it still has... The animation. Let's edit it. So if you still edit this, which you can't do it in Adobe Animate. Yeah. We'll, we'll uh, yeah. talk about that later another time. Them are producers, I have a lot of questions <laughs> for. But, uh, so, we'll it plays see. a lot better when you edit. And you can have everything that we still had, I just changed the colors of everything. So I think we'll probably, I kind of liked how these green and uh, it's a nice blue color. dots, so I think we're going to have, I was thinking of putting some fireflies in this too, I think will look really cool. Yeah, so we have all these uh, uh, wilderness creatures that kind of, we animated on the this whole program, but, but now it's going to be really cool. And you can see we we're, we're grabbing yeah, all grab from that. what we want to. We're just hide we're just the references. Taking. Don't don't. It's okay. Don't uh, all you don't tell anyone that. <laughs> that's all six of you don't tell what we're referencing. No, that's, that's this is actually I think this line. this tree here is probably more of a reference from. Um, Sleeping Beauty, I feel like, is mm. something I would have taken mm. from. So. Oh, yeah, I totally get yeah. that. That's nice. But I like the colors of that. So. All right. Should we show? I think that was everything new. Do you have an, any new backgrounds? That, those, those are the newest new stuff from. Oh, that's about it. Yeah. But I oh, could yeah. give a quick little oh, the boss. demo yeah, the boss. on. A demo on how we went about this. It's a long, it's a long bus. It's a long yeah, maybe yeah, was, uh, next week let's do a background one. Yeah, it's a lot of playing around. I, I we haven't quite figured out. We, one thing we're trying to find out too is we found in demoing a lot of people didn't know that you could hit the crate. So we're trying to figure out a good way to make sure people know. Yeah. That a background element is something that you can interact with. So uh, I think it's uh, going to be a color thing. Like if you see yellow, you know you can hit it, or if you see orange, you know you can, you know, something like that. And just indicate it early on, or just put the crates in front of something that they they have to press every button to realize it. So this is the floor, and what I actually did. Let's see. 
No, just the idea that you can't edit it that way is just mind blowing. So that's really just a few lines. And yeah, you, you got this textured line just by erasing, right? Yeah. So I did a lot of. I'll do like a. Uh, you can do that at the start. Yeah, we're going to do. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. What do you say? What was you can do like do that in the first level, sort of. Like, it show that the crates. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah exactly. Right. So I was doing a line, like, we could use the pencil tool if I wanted a line. And I would make it a particular color. We would use. Uh, break that line. Mm -hmm. So now the line is actually a brush tool. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, I have mine set up. I set hotkeys. So you he's going to convert line to fill here. Uh, she convert lines to fill. I have mine set up to hotkeys to do this. So now it's yeah. So now I just take. To brush it. You know, you take a little bit out of it and give it a painterly feel. A lot like that. And I'm trying to keep. We're trying. That's why we're trying to keep all the lines a particular width to mm -hmm. try to match everything in yeah. every background and to match the character. Well, a big pitfall with people who animate in Flash, I find, is they do, they'll make one item and they'll scale it to whatever size they need without any regard to the background. Now, if you're taking the old master's uh, background design or animation, you would, you figure they did everything on one sheet of paper. So they don't. They didn't have the opportunity to zoom in and zoom out and do all that stuff. So they're basically using the same brush. And you'll see in our animation. That's why we have certain zoom levels. We always have uh, try to approach with. We have. Um, yeah, you'll get that a few times. Yeah. Um, certain uh, just rules we have to abide by just to adhere to those old practical ways that they used to use. And that's sort of what we're kind of going for here. One thing I do a lot too is, so I'll start with, let's see, let's make a, I try to use the paint strokes in a way that I'll make a solid here. And this would kind of be, let's say this was the color of something. So I'll do a linear color on it. This linear. And let's go with like a purple color to another lighter purple. All right, so we've got that. I'll make that a group so we don't mess with that. And I'll make this a group. So this is like our, our paint stroke. And we kind of want to ease our way up into color. So what I'll do is I will grab something somewhere in between and change the color of that paint stroke and then just duplicate it and kind of and make my own like little smaller bigger yeah. anything you kind of want to do i usually flip it to to make it a little different and kind of work your way in and out of that And then give, gives it a nice painterly feel that you would we want it we you know we would do in Photoshop normally probably, but to be able to scale it up without losing any of the quality. We go like that. And you see, he just took some like one item, and that's the beauty of a flash. flash. And like that's you know, we're always looking for a way to expedite our our uh, our process here. And you, you see, he just did that, and you'd be really hard pressed to sit there when all this whole game is going on, and you're running past this say tile to notice that this was not more than one. Uh, brushstroke and that's what we're sort of about we're trying to 
recreate um, an animation that looks like a large team took part of it, but at the same time looked like one artist did it, and that's sort of, I, I think, the Exit 73 approach. Um, so anyway, I'm going to show you what we're going to do next week since we're kind of wrapping up on time here. You also, um, Andrew mentioned to oh, mention the website. Or oh, the oh, do you want to post that? Do you give, uh, give it's it up us. there. I'll post it in here. Okay, so uh, if you guys want to check out new blood stuff, we got a website just dedicated to all their content. You can sign up for the mailing list. You get special content. We're going to give you swag and all that stuff through it. Uh, sign up your name. We're, we're not a spam company. We're not going to email you every day. I think we only sent out one so far. Anyway. Um, the emails will come from Corey and other people. Yeah, it'll come from characters in the game. It'll, you know, eventually when we get the demo in a good place where we're confident we can send it out to people, we're going to send it your way and stuff first. So, you know, feel free to sign up because we're, we're definitely... And, and if you have questions, reach out, please, because we're, we try to pride ourselves on answering everything you guys ask and we're not these snooty companies that are just going to ignore people um so next week i'm going to show you we've done the traditional stuff bob's going to do more backgrounds it sounds like which oh yeah that's another we're going to do that for the background there um but i'm going to show you how i would approach this scene which is just kind of one solid move i'm going to do this stuff in line tool shape tweens and all that stuff so it's not just you know, in between yourself to death. And I'm gonna show you how to do it, shoot it on twos and make it look great so it doesn't feel like it's tweened either. All right, and I think that concludes our episode. Thanks for putting up with all my technical difficulties. <laughs> Us drinking and drawing, which is always fun. Uh, demo on Shape Tweens next time. Yeah, we'll do it. Shape Tweens, we'll I got that, I got you here. Now it's funny because Shape Tweens are probably not as good as anime, but I'll show you how I manage through MX and I assure you the principles are the same. And then we're gonna get this whole thing done and we'll put it on our social media. If you don't follow us on Twitter, at Exit73 Studios, Instagram, Exit73 Studios, Facebook, and we hope to see you guys next week. And don't worry, we'll get this thing figured out, all this computer <laughs> stuff. But uh, on behalf of me, Bob, and Cody, Andrew, and Greg, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, enjoy. <laughs>